Hello, today we're going to talk about arginine, L-arginine. Um, <clears throat> some of you may recognize that, uh, that term from other videos that I've done recently on citrulline. Uh, in fact, there's a debate in the internet about whether to, for people that want to take supplements in this space, whether to take uh, citrulline as a supplement or arginine. I'm not going to get into that today. I made in a later video, but <clears throat> um, why is there a debate over those two? Because they go to a common endpoint, an endpoint called nitric oxide. So I am going to talk a little bit about nitric oxide, why that's important, uh, the discovery of, uh, of nitric oxide, and whether or not L-arginine actually helps. Um, <clears throat> But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer. Um, I'm a doc. I uh, have been in prevention, uh, preventive medicine for a long time. This is a channel about preventive medicine, the science behind preventive medicine. I had a, um, a viewer complain recently that I talked a lot, but didn't tell him what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do on this channel. Uh, you, you can find out what to do in uh, plenty of places on the internet. This is more about the science, the background, giving you the facts so you can decide for yourself uh, what you need to do in terms of longevity and prevention. <clears throat> so, I mentioned nitric oxide. Um, <clears throat> we've known about nitric oxide for a while. In fact, if you look at this um, article out of Circulation 1998, they're announcing, this is about the, uh, the Nobel Prize. Uh, for medicine uh, that year, and, and it was for nitric oxide discoveries. Uh, here's a few things about it. It went to three scientists, Dr. Robert Furchgott uh, at SUNY, I think, Dr. Luis Ignaro at, uh, in L.A., and Dr. Fareed Murad, I think, at, uh, in Texas. Um, <clears throat> they received the 1998 uh, Nobel Prize, and obviously in Stockholm, and then came back to the States and did some, uh, some other things, and I'll describe what one of them did in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> 20 years before that, Dr. Furchgott at SUNY began studies uh, back around 1980, and what he found was there's a substance made by the endothelium, the intima. You may remember that. I've mentioned it many times in many videos. The endothelium, he said, creates a chemical. It's a signaling chemical, and it relaxes vascular smooth muscle cells. Remember, that's the media. So the, in, the intima is making a chemical that relaxes the, the media. When you relax the media, that's going to lower the blood pressure, and it's going to do a lot of very interesting things. Um, Dr. Murad, in an unrelated set of, exper of experiments, at the University of Texas in Houston, was analyzing how nitroglycerin works in 1977. <clears throat> he found that the nitrates release nitric oxide, which releases, which uh, relaxes those smooth muscle cells, resulting in vasodilation. In fact, we still use nitrates. Um, one of the classic things when I went through medical school was use of nitrates for angina heart pain associated with plaque in the coronary arteries. He was fascinated by the colorless, odorless gas and the fact that a colorless, odor odorless gas could be a sim signaling chemical within the walls of the arteries. Now, Dr. Ignaro, who was now a professor at UCLA in medicine in California, concluded through a series of experiments that this chemical, the endothelial cells produced, this endothelial cell smooth muscle um, relaxing factor, or EDRF, that was described in the beginning by Dr. Furchgott in, in uh, Texas. He called it endothelial, uh, endothelium derived relaxing factor. That's what he called it. Uh, meanwhile, over in LA, Dr. Ignaro identified endothelium-derived relaxing factor, and he said it's nitric oxide. So, some very interesting pieces of research, um, and 
uh, they also connect some dots that I think a lot of people didn't know that um, citrulline and um, arginine are all related to uh, the nitrates, nitroglycerin. So <clears throat> we'll talk about those uh, briefly in a few minutes. Before we go on, uh, I mean, before we do that, just a couple of other comments about the um, the Nobel Prize that year. Michael DeBakey, uh, the heart surgeon, was the chairman of the Lasker Award jury. And there had been some back and forth about, there were a lot of scientists involved in these discoveries around um, nitric oxide. And there was some, uh, some docs were, um, were included in the Lasker Award. Some doctors were included in the um, in the Nobel uh, Prize Award, but again, there wasn't total overlap. There was some jawing and back and forth. Dr. Furchgott, who was 82 years old, said, you know what, I'm just surprised to have gotten the prize. Usually the Nobel Prize goes to something that's a lot more popular than molecular research. I'm just an old-fashioned pharmacologist. Now, <clears throat> Uh, DeBakey, I mentioned him a minute ago, he made the point, and this is, this is a, a, a critical point. Uh, this work, all of this work going around nitric oxide uh, is very important because it's a fundamental finding affecting circulation. It's a fundamental and important observation. So if Michael DeBakey said that about nitric oxide and arginine and citrulline are precursors of nitric oxide, now you start to get some understanding of why people are so interested in those supplements. <clears throat> okay, so enough about the Nobel Prize, uh, other than to just give you a, a picture of one of the winners. I'm not going to go into the pictures of the other winners. Here's Dr. Ignaro. Actually, I will show you the pictures. I uh, know uh, I won't. Dr. Ignaro, you'll see him again in a few minutes. Now, let's go to arginine. <clears throat> Here is a, uh, does arginine actually work? So we've got some theoretical background. This is a study on the effect of oral arginine supplementation on, uh, on blood pressure. It's a meta-analysis. You remember that's where, a meta-analysis is where you find a lot of other studies that have been done and you analyze, you create a study of those studies. So you analyze, you get a lot bigger numbers that way. Some of the smaller studies may not actually, um, they may not be good. They may have bias. They may not be totally looking at the same research question. So you have to go through all of those issues when you do a meta-analysis. This meta-analysis uh, was part of the Cochrane uh, Central Register of Trials. Um, they used the Cochrane uh, study um, information. They use information out of clinicaltrials.gov. So these are both really good resources um, and you would think the uh, you know so far as you start looking through the science here the science is pretty good. What did they find? Well the results was this. Compared with placebo L-arginine interventions significantly lowered blood pressure. 5.3 milligrams mercury um, systolic and 2.66 diastolic. Here's another thing. You'll, whenever you see uh, studies, you'll also see these numbers. P equals or P is less than. And um, that's the probability of this occurring in these studies by a random event is less than. So the, the p-value was very good on these. There were less than a tenth of one percent. So that sounds pretty good, right? Well, <clears throat> I tell you, you get a much bigger decrease in blood pressure from, the, uh, from a lot of other medications. But a lot of people don't want to take medications. They'd rather take supplements, things that have not been researched and, um, and pushed by Big Pharma, things that have not gone through safety trials by, uh, and reviewed by the FDA. And I understand fully. So, if you've got a mild uh, impact on your blood pressure that you're looking to get, and you want to go supplements versus medications, <clears throat> that's what the science says. 
I'll get back to those in just a minute. <coughs> Before I do, though, just wanted to make a brief comment regarding nitrates. If you look up nitrates and nitroglycerin, you'll find that nitrates have a significant uh, impact in a couple of different ways. They release the, um, they dilate the veins, so you get a decreased re blood return to the heart. You get, that's called a decreased preload. That decreases the ventricular load. That decreases the wall tension in the ventricles. And so, <clears throat> again, that's how uh, nitric oxide from nitrates or nitroglycerin helps with angina. <coughs> Excuse the cough. <clears throat> I, I'm, I do take Ramipril, by the way, and sometimes I do get a cough. That's an ACE inhibitor. <clears throat> That's another way of decreasing your blood pressure. At higher doses, um, nitrates will actually even dilate arteries. If you dilate arteries instead of just veins, you're going to uh, decrease peripheral resistance and therefore uh, after load as well. In other words, decrease the load coming into the heart, also decrease the load that the heart is pushing against. <clears throat> so again, how many people do you know or have you heard of that had angina and were taking nitrates? <clears throat> again, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, relaxing the artery walls, relaxing the veins, uh, relaxing the heart. So, back to arginine for a minute. Arginine is a supplement. This is another study, effect of long-term oral arginine supplementation on glucose. Now, this was not, uh, this is in um, Diabetes and Obesity Met Metabolism, uh, 2012, October, by Monty L, M-O-N-T-I-L-D, uh, and a group. <clears throat> this is not a meta-analysis like the other two. This is just a... Uh, a clinical trial. Basically what they did was they took 144 individuals, they gave them um, arginine, 6.4 grams per day on average, uh, for 18 months plus a 12-month extended period. Did they get an improvement in diabetes or insulin uh, resistance? The, the answer is yes. Uh, they did not get an improvement in the probability of becoming full-blown diabetic. They did get an improvement, however, in the probability of return to a normal glucose tolerance. Now, how should we, and again, fairly good um, p-values on this, less than uh, 0.001, less than a tenth of a percent. How do we interpret that? Those of us who work with diabetes and insulin resistance a lot uh, can tell you, look, if the pancreas is shot, uh, you're... Um, the islets, we call the islets of Langerhans, the, the part that produces insulin, if that's shot, you, there's really not much you can do for it. But if you've got mild uh, problems with insulin resistance and therefore pushing your, your pancreas harder than normal with some changes like lifestyle changes and maybe even with arginine, you can get some, evidently, maybe get some improvement. How much of an improvement? Again, it's sort of like the, um, the picture with the blood pressure. Not a lot, but some people really prefer supplements to, um, to uh, medications. So another question about uh, research around arginine. This is safety and performance benefits of arginine supplements for military personnel. This was also a meta-analysis. Basically, this looks like um, <clears throat> their point was, these people were in the military. Uh, this was published in Nutritional Review 2016, uh, November. Um, and they're saying, look, a lot of military people are taking arginine supplementation. Does it work? Does it help in terms of performance? Their answer was no. Um, <clears throat> they reviewed 2,687 articles. Um, most of them were not so good research and were dumped. They did use 62 articles in terms of uh, meeting all the inclusion criteria. In, a, in other words, they didn't see a lot of risk of bias, consistency, directness, precision of the, of the research. Here was their summary. 
L-arginine supplementation provided little enhancement of athletic performance or improvements in recovery. Short-term supplementation with arginine may result in adverse uh, gastrointestinal and cardiovascular effects. Um, <clears throat> the uh, GI, I, I don't think it was a very serious one. I, I will investigate maybe and do something a little bit deeper on potential cardiovascular effects. Um, so again, maybe not so good for performance. Uh, they were actually seeing maybe the opposite effect in terms of uh, mi not minimal improvement, but they thought maybe some risk in terms of cardiovascular. Um, <clears throat> so again, I'm not going to tell you whether to take arginine or not. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the science. And as usual, there's confusion, there's mixed signals within the science. Uh, you remember I told you about Dr. Ignaro? Um, <clears throat> he... Uh, went to Stockholm to receive his Nobel Prize, and then he came home. He got a job with Herbal Life, so he actually made a uh, quite a, a few um, advertisements for an Herbal Life product called. And here he is in his Herbal Life uh, uh, wearable billboard uh, uh, cycle uh, cycling shirt. And I think the product they were called, they were uh, selling at that point was called Nightwatch. And his point was, yes, you can really increase your nitric oxide and it'll do a lot of great things for your health. So <clears throat> here's part of the point. If you win a Nobel Prize, and I have not, um, a lot of people are going to listen to you about whether to take something. As I said before, I'm not going to tell you whether to take something or not. I will just tell you a little bit more about the science. And again, unfortunately, the science is not always that clear. Thank you for your interest.